Evening gents, I've been having a bit of a hiatus, I've uh, been off having a few stitches in my guts to fix a bit of a problem and uh, thus no lifting. But we're back out in the shed last week or so, so uh, I'll show you what I've got on the go. In my fuel system I had a massive leak, I used to have a rollover valve just up here and uh, it wasn't very good, just a couple of hose clips. So I've I might have bought myself a little airflow ball that fits straight onto my red tank breather. Haven't quite finished up onto the union with the rubber there. Lots of half-finished jobs at the moment, but um, we have another filter also to replace this one the same as that one, so there will be a matching pair. Anyway, the fuel system's working great, so we'll leave that be. Anyway. Most of my work is on getting this thing to handle now. Uh, we had a great run at Phillip Island. We've missed the next meeting, which was at um, uh, at Winton, but the racing in the rain was terrible. But um, anyway, we'll run through what we've got here. I'll try and make this quick. Um, I mainly want to take a shot of this for Griffin Tazzy. Never met the bloke, but uh, I feel like he's a mate already. Now there are other systems of Woolwood or anything else that you can run, but when you come for a get up to a break upgrade, uh, I've had two or three different ones. This bolts straight onto your holding stub. Although I've got big bearing hubs, everything else here should align up. Uh, this is all Woolwood gear. It'll fit inside a 15. I'm not sure what you're running, but um, this whole sender is the same. The only modification I had to make to this bracket was by taking this amount off up here which I was very concerned about initially and I will probably see and see some new ones up eventually with this extra amount being part of that bracket because this is probably the suit Chev Camaro I would imagine or something of that nature. The other upgrade I've made, uh, I don't know if this is the way everyone would want to go I'm not sure I would do this one again. These are a semi-coil over that you get from QA1. Uh, it gives you the adjustability in height, which now that you're starting to weigh your car, you'll find that very handy. Um, the problem I have is that I have to keep the center line of the shock, so I cannot move this mount, and I'm not supposed to move this mount. The center lines have to stay the same. It's advisable with the spring weights we will be running to be putting that, sorry, that rod on top of here. Now, of course, that's going to give you the thickness of the pin as extra ride height, which you'll then want to be able to adjust out. Um, then the whole weight of everything will be sitting on top of the arm and you'll be in a good place. At the moment, I, I've just made an extra plate up here so that I don't pull these bolts through Worst case scenario, there's no deformation there, so I think I'm okay. I've also converted over to QA1 joints. These are available in different lengths to um, change your ride height. Not your ride height, your roll centre. These are uh, half an inch longer than standard, and they've just got no friction, and they're beautiful. Um, what that's going to do to my handling, I don't know yet. Uh, it's... Yeah, there's, I won't, I'm not going to go into explaining what I've done. The top arm also has a long joint in it now as well. These are all available. So what that does is actually change your roll centre in a good way by sending that angle between the pivot and the ball joint and where it's mounted on the car closer towards the ground which is what we want to be doing. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that affects things. Uh, yeah, along with this messing around, we've got a lot of springs here. These were the standard ones that, I'll show you how that works. They fit on the Q, these come with the QA1 setup. So this is the standard Chev Holden diameter, which is three and a half inch internal, fits up into your spring pocket and then sits nicely on there and gives you that adjustability. It's a great setup. I think if I had a street car, that'd be fantastic. This is the heaviest one I can get my hands on at the moment, 550 pounds, nowhere near enough. 
So, in, an, in order, phase two to get around that was go to King Springs. Sorry if this is waving around, I'm trying to be quick. This is a comparable height, but obviously smaller diameter coil over uh, two and a half inch spring, thousand pounds from King Springs. Then, because I'm not allowed to modify the seat or any of the other suspension center lines, I made up this aluminium adapter to fit into the spring pocket up the top. The drama I ran into is that's all nice while it's sitting here. When it's in the car, the shock gets, the center shock man is not in the middle of the turret, so to speak. So the whole thing's pulling over like this, and when the shock comes up, it hits this edge. So even though there's a reasonable amount of clearance on that shock body, probably five mil, it really isn't enough. So that didn't work. So last weekend's desperation to try and get something that I had working. Now these King Springs are 850 pound. They're just your standard lowered um, King Spring, which will be that number. Uh, they'd be pretty good. Um, I hadn't tried yet to see whether they would fit over the shock absorber, which uh, to my great surprise do and don't interfere with the adjusting knobs. The main point of having these was to get the adjustment on the uh, rebound and uh, compression. So as you can see, if that's in its pocket, you could still easily get a screwdriver. If they've got a slot in them. That'd still be a useful tool. They're not going to bind. So my next effort then was, well, these things are still sit too high. I'll cut a bit off. <laughs> that went well awry and that I took 10 mil in height off the spring. But of course, what you do when you cut a coil over, which I knew this already, but for some reason forgot, this whole coil becomes inactive as soon as this uh, end touches here. Because I've now opened that gap up on this end to probably 25 mil, the first thing that happens is it wants to take that gap up before it actually loads the whole spring. So of course the car just dropped down onto the bump stops and even though all I removed was probably half a turn, like so, which in this plane is very little, whoops, in actual fact because I've now point loaded the spring it was a fail. So that didn't work. <laughs> so the save for all of this is the correct spring is being made at the moment at King Springs at a fairly reasonable cost. Not sure what that is yet. Um, um, uh, it will be three inches shorter um, than this. So it will look more like I did make a spring at work. I'll just get that. Hang on. Now I made this one at work just to dummy up and see how um, the installed height would work. The trouble is um, this one is way too heavy. This is about 1,600 pound uh, when I tested it on the machine at work. So yeah, way too heavy. When I put it in the car just to try it, I got I made a pair. You know, it's not ideal and square either. Um, yeah, just uh, you can't even push it down. It's way, way too hard. But at least it let me uh, set my ride height and get that side of uh, installing the thing correct. So, yeah, then I sent my specs off to King Springs and let's see what they come back with. I'm hoping next week. So I've got three weeks till racing, so I hope to go testing before then. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's all underway. So there's a few more other projects parts have arrived got myself a aluminium filter with a stainless inner to replace the old K&N LZ9 so I'm hoping that will be successful I haven't got round to that one yet I'll try to stay out of here so I don't lift anything I've got another Detroit locker uh, that's to go in the diff head over here my high diff this is all uh, still in good Nick, but it's getting a bit loose. Uh, that just has a 
lock right center, which is just a Detroit style center that goes uh, in place of your spider gears. Okay for low horsepower and it's done its trick. But uh, yeah, I'm not waiting for that to go wing in the middle of nowhere. So I've put the low diff back in this thing to go to Winton. Um, that had an interesting problem. I won't go into that now, but uh, uh, when I do the other diff, I'll cover that again and show you a uh, must do as far as the fastness for your in gear go. If you're gonna build a diff head, because there's a couple of little, I'm learning as I go, and there was a couple of little uh, traps that I didn't know. Anyway, I'm looking forward to putting that in. Um, I've got new rotors as spears because they're changing the tax law, so I bought in as much stuff as I could before the end of this month when we're all going to have to start paying GST on our summit bits. And um, yeah, I've got new pads. Uh, I'll run them in on these old discs, but these are monsters, all right? These brakes work wicked. And uh, one of the other guys I was talking to with a Commodore, he has a similar six piston wheelwood set up, but they are super light, something of that nature. They are an inch shorter across the pad, so they're like that much shorter in pad area. So um, I thought I was just being a bit keen and braking late, but in actual fact, I probably got way better brakes than half the guys out there. So um, once we can make it turn, I'm hoping we should have an advantage. Um, all the front guys are running APs, which are like $1,800 each per caliper. Getting vented rotors like these from them are about 800 each, I think, 700 So yeah, we don't want to go down that road. If we can beat them with, or at least run with them on the swillwood gear, which is reasonably cheap, I'll be well happy. Anyway, uh, when we actually start getting some of this working, I'll catch us all up again. Ciao.